Welcome back, everybody, to the KC Sports Report. I'm your host, Michael Darcy, and today I have the pleasure to be joined by my good friend, Josh Fan of ShowMeFootball.com and ArrowheadAddict.com. And today we're going to talk about Chris Jones, seemingly a topic that we can't avoid, but we got Never some ending. new news to talk about. Um, so <laughs> there was a tweet on Twitter, or X, if you call it that. It's Twitter. By- <laughs> Just call it Twitter. <laughs> okay, it's Twitter, by uh, Sean Berkey, and he said, at Stone Cold Jones. So when you're going to show up, because you've been playing too much on Twitter and social media, you've been an all pro on social media during training camp, you're under contract for this year, correct? For how much money? Man, I bet it's rough to live on 20 million a year. And then he posted like some picture of something that you put outside of like a restaurant. It says it's out of your hands. It deserves freedom from your mind also. And then Chris Jones Twitter tag. And then he responded to that tweet week eight, which put Chiefs Kingdom in a frenzy. And then Arrowhead Live quote tweeted that week eight tweet from Chris Jones by saying, that'd be a hefty tab. And then he responded to them by saying, I can afford it. So obviously not the news that we wanted to hear today, but Josh, what are your thoughts? This is crazy, man, because this can be interpreted so many different ways. And Chris Jones, I feel like he has fun with the Twitter a little bit. He has fun with the social media. I know he had that thing with Michael Bay on his Instagram of Michael Bay of all people. And it's like, how, like what, what a weird pairing. Like how did Chris Jones and Michael Bay end up together? I don't know. And then he's tweet or put post that thing about saying Chris Jones quit the team, which I feel like that was just like a huge troll job. I don't know if this is, but it's, it's interesting that he threw out like a very specific timeline, like week eight, like that's when I would be back. I feel like he had to have been thinking about that, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into it too much. I mean, I obviously made a video on my channel about this before we decided to do something, but I don't know, man. I just, I, I got to say that if Chris Jones truly sits out until week eight, we are in a lot of trouble. First of all, I want to point out that until you texted me with this video idea in mind, I had not been on Twitter. Guys, it's it's school time at the University of Kansas. So I've been running around campus uh, in this 107 degree heat, just sweating my ass off. And then I log on Twitter and I see what Chris Jones has been saying. And am I surprised? No. Chris Jones has been doing a lot of talking, like that tweet said, all offseason long. Am I surprised that he gave an almost ultimatum of a date to come back like week eight? Kind of. Do I think it's 100% serious? No, I I think that there's definitely some stretching of the truth, some, you know, I guess you could say trolling going on because Chris Mm -hmm. Jones has been trolling Chiefs fans on Twitter all offseason long to the point where I'm basically sick of it. I really don't care anymore. But like you said, I wonder if there is any truth in this, you know, tweet. Is he going to come back in week eight? Is he going to be willing to sit out that many games he would be fined. I think we did the research before this stream started that he would be fined one eighteenth of his contract. And he's set to make nineteen and a half million dollars in twenty twenty three. So that's a pretty hefty check if he sits out eight games. I mean, seven games. Yeah. That's just that's a lot of time to miss. Um, but you know, Le'Veon Bell's his friend. He's probably in his ear right now. So I, I don't really know what to think. I don't know how much I buy what he just said on Twitter because he's just, he's just been saying so much stuff all off season long, but I, I definitely don't think this is an encouraging thing. It's definitely a fall off from all the vibes we were getting at the beginning of the off season where Chris Jones was tweeting and everybody saying, I will never play for another franchise ever again. And then even just a couple weeks ago, I mean, you made that video where Chris Jones is like, Oh, you know, even if I don't come to an agreement on an extension, like, I got one more year left on my contract. Like, let's have fun this year. Like, he he made it sound like he's going to be back by week one. And then now he says this, indicating he might not be back week one. Now, if you ask me, do I think this guy is going to sit out till week eight? Probably not. But I, I, we've had this discussion. I know you threw out the Le'Veon Bell connection and Jess, but, like, I think there is, like, a factor there because Le'Veon Bell and Chris Jones are pretty tight. Le'Veon Bell was a player that sat out regular season games. He still got paid. Like, say what you want about Le'Veon Bell. Was going to the Jets the right move for him? Probably not, but he got paid by the New York Jets. That's all he cared about, and that's fine. Like, he won the money. He got his money. I think Chris Jones 
staying with Kansas City is important to him to an extent, yes, but he's also serious about his money. And I actually mentioned this in the video that I made, Michael, and I never brought it up with you in any of the past videos that we've made, but something that I think about when it comes to a Chris Jones extension. So the last time he got extended, uh, or the last time he sat out, rather, before that, the Kansas City Chiefs brought in Frank Clark from outside the organization. They gave him five years, $105 million. That was more than the Chiefs ever gave Chris Jones. And that was before they took care of Chris Jones. Like, they brought in this guy from outside of the organization, paid him more than Chris Jones while Chris Jones was here putting in the work. You know, he had already proved to the organization, you know, what he meant. He, he had already proved himself as a player. And he ended up getting, uh, what was it, four or five for 80, or it was like four for 80 or 85 million, somewhere around there. Around that range. It was like four for 75 or maybe five for 80. I, I can't remember. Dude, I, it was like four for 80, I'm pretty sure. And so I think since then, Chris Jones has always kind of felt like that was a slap in the face from the Chiefs organization that, you know, he worked hard to get to where he was and he doesn't even get paid as much as Frank Clark. And he was a way better player than Frank Clark. And I know Chris Jones and Frank Clark are also friends. So like Chris Jones is never going to say that publicly, but I think Chris Jones really took less last time than he could have gotten. I think if he had hit the open market, even back then he could have gotten more from another team, but you could argue that Chris Jones took less money on his last deal. And now he's insisting that he gets is this time like and he, this is his final contract like yeah in my opinion this is the only chance that chris jones is going to have for the rest of his career career to max out and get the most money possible i mean mm -hmm. he's only getting up there in age and once he hits his mid-30s no one's going to pay chris jones top of the market value because he just isn't going to be the same player i think he'll yep. be a very very good player three or four years from now but after that, we can't bank on the success of Chris Jones as a guarantee. So that's why this is so important to him because this is the final chance that he's ever going to have to make life-altering money from the National Football League. And I've always been on the train that Chris Jones deserves to be paid. He deserves to be paid top of the, top of the market value. That's what he's worth. And if it hurts the Chiefs, I understand that, you know, it might be tough, but you got to pay players like Chris Jones what they're worth to keep them happy, to keep them around. And the Chiefs have not done that. If this was Patrick Mahomes, they would be they would be running to Patrick Mahomes with a Brinks truck full of money and gold bars. And it wouldn't even be a debate. It wouldn't be a question. But mm -hmm. Chris Jones, who I would argue is the captain of this team on defense, why is he not getting the same treatment when they're arguably – one and two on you know the most important and most pivotal player totem pole. So it's really interesting to kind of see how the Chiefs have handled this situation with the lack of urgency. And do I think he's going to sit out until week eight? No, that's a lot of time. But I think that even if he does sit out until like week four or five, it begs the question on if Andy Reid would play him. Granted, I think, you know, if he comes back in week four or five, he's got a lot of time to kind of get back in the coach's favor. But if he misses the first four games of the NFL season, do you think that Andy Reid is going to be like, oh, yeah, Chris, you're lining up right now. You're starting. I have a hard time thinking that Andy Reid, uh, Andy Reid would even bend that far to accommodate Chris Jones. I, I think Andy Reid knows how talented Chris Jones is, obviously. But even he can't, you know – do that after the way Chris Jones has acted all off season long. If we're being honest, it really depends on the situation in which he returns to. If he comes back and the chief's defense is absolutely awful. Uh, I think it would be a really bad look if they didn't play him, but if the chiefs are like four and oh, five and oh, and then he comes back, I could see Andy going like Chris, like you're going to have to earn your way back. Like you're not just going to, skip all the work that we did all off season and think you're jumping these guys. Uh, now, is it a little silly? Yes. Cause like this is a Chris Jones we're talking about, but Andy Reed doesn't appreciate when players sits out. We've talked about that before. I got to say this though, and I'm going to go on a little mini rant because I've right. already gotten comments uh, on the video that I made and I'm, I'm starting to see it already. I'm sure you've seen it as well. 
oh, Chris Jones is a cancer. Who cares? Move on. Like, Chris Jones is a baby. Oh, Chris Jones isn't a team player. Like, oh, if he's going to cause this many problems, like, you know, let's just get rid of him. Like, we should have traded him. Chiefs fans, I love you guys, but you will turn on these players the moment they're disgruntled like a revolver. You will turn on them. And it is infuriating because I, I've already seen like endless optimism on Twitter as well from people saying, oh, the Chiefs are still a Super Bowl contender without Chris Jones. The Chiefs will be in contention. They always will be as long as they have Patrick Mahomes. But I'm telling you guys right now, if they do not have Chris Jones for the 2023 season, they are not winning a Super Bowl. They're just not. Look at the AFC Championship game from last year. How many times have I said that this offseason? And tell me this team is winning anything without Chris Jones. You guys always do this with players that want their money or just are doing what's best for them. You guys will say, oh, Chiefs don't need them. And you can only say that about so many players. Chris Jones, I don't think you can say that about him. Like, this team needs Chris Jones. If the Chiefs trade Chris Jones or get rid of him or he doesn't show up, anything like that, uh, this becomes a bottom five defensive line, very likely becomes a bottom 10 defense. You guys saw this defense in the preseason game without Chris Jones. Like the first team defense against the Saints, they were god awful. Like they rough. freaking rough. they freaking need Chris Jones, dude. And look at the defensive tackle room, even behind Chris Jones. Tershawn Wharton off a torn ACL, rookie Keandre Coburn, Derek Nadi. Like, don't forget about Danny the- Shelton. That might be the worst defensive tackle room in the league. I think I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that would be the worst defensive tackle room in the league. Like this team needs Chris Jones, and it would have been different if they wanted to trade him and they did it at the beginning of the offseason, got draft picks, signed replacement, free agency, a middle of the road guy, drafted some players they like, stuff like that. You're not getting anyone that's going to help you, even if you trade Chris Jones now. You're not going to get anyone that helps you for this year, and that's a major problem because then you're going to have a massive hole in the middle of your defense. And, yes, we've seen Patrick Mahomes uh, do well and succeed. We've seen the Chiefs succeed without a very good defense before. But I just I know the Chiefs have added a lot of talent on defense. I do. But I think if you take Chris Jones off this defense, he is so important that this might be the worst Chiefs defense we've seen in the Patrick Mahomes era if you take Chris Jones off of it. I, I really think he's that important to what they do. And this defensive line needs him, man. Like, they just don't have that much without him. They're already going to be struggling, even if he does come back, because Charles Amenehu is going to be gone for the first six yeah. games. And that only increases the importance of getting Chris Jones back for the regular season. I just I hate when we do this. I hate when Chiefs fans do this with players acting like we don't need them or we're above meeting their needs because uh, you're all about the team and not the player. I'm, I would say I'm pretty pro player. Like, I want to see Chris Jones get paid. I think he deserves it. I think he has every single right to set out. I mean, if you felt like you were – the best, if you even at your job, if you felt like you were the best worker there yeah. and you saw all these other guys, five, six, seven, eight guys getting paid more than you, would that not piss you off? Like, I, and you make I'm a on Chris Jones' point. side. I was about to bring that up. Imagine you're in the workforce and you're as valuable to your company as Chris Jones is to the Kansas City Chiefs. And you mm-hmm. see guys that are way below you getting paid way more than you. You're going to sit out. You're going to be like, hey, man, I am worth this, and you're paying me this. And until we come to the middle and, and can agree on a new contract or you know a new salary, I'm not showing up. Because guess what? That's how valuable I am. I know my worth. And the person in that situation has the leverage. Chris Jones has all of the leverage in this situation. He does. And it's different because if – Frank Clark did this or Charles Omena who did this, the Chiefs would laugh and just send them somewhere else. But you can't do that with Chris Jones. Chris Jones Mm -hmm. is a generational player, a guy that can single-handedly change and ruin games. He's changed the Chiefs franchise since he's been here. You can't let that guy just walk in free agency. It would be such a a big mistake, and that's why the Chiefs have just got to find a way to pay him. And I know that a lot of Chiefs fans are upset with some of the things that Chris Jones has said on Twitter. I don't believe a lot of them are legit. I think he loves to troll Chiefs kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie. You guys are fun to troll sometimes because you react crazy. You are crazy on Twitter. It's like, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, man. Like y'all are, you just, you got to stop taking everything so personal that these players say, like 
a few months ago, everyone loved Chris Jones. Chris Jones was tweeting at fans saying, I love Kansas City. And all these yeah. fans are like, yeah, build Chris Jones a statue. And now they're all like, screw Chris Jones. We don't need him. It's like, come on, guys. Like, be real. This team is not winning anything without Chris Jones next year. Yes, eventually they're going to have to learn to live without Chris Jones. Like, there's going to be a day where they move on, sure. But you're going to have time to prepare for that. You want to give yourself time to prepare for that. They're just not built for it right now. Yeah, and and draft his eventual replacement and stuff like that. Um, They're in a position where they need Chris Jones right now this year. Even if he's not on the Chiefs beyond this year, that's fine because I'm sure there will be some sort of plan next offseason if that is the case. But right now, this season, they need Chris Jones. They are not winning a single thing without him. Like, be real. They're, they're, They're just, they're not. Patrick Mahomes... I know people want to say he's God, and sometimes he sure does seem like it, yeah. but he cannot overcome everything. No, the Chiefs need Chris Jones, and the people that don't believe the Chiefs need Chris Jones, uh, I would not listen to your football takes. I would not listen to your football <laughs> advice because you clearly have not watched Chris Jones and what he can do to an offensive line. Like that AFC Championship game, you've mentioned it all offseason long. Seeing what he did in that game, against a a banged up Bengals offensive line that was double teaming him. He went into that game with no postseason sacks. The pressure was on Mm -hmm. and he tore them apart. Like that is the guy that I want lining up on my defensive line in the big games, in the big moments, go back to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, the bat down of the line of scrimmage. Yeah. He was making big time plays in this year's Super Bowl. So Chris Jones and what he offers is quite literally invaluable. Like he is the kind of player that, you cannot let go, and that's why I think we're both in very much so agreement that the Chiefs have got to pay Chris Jones what he's worth, and they've got to come to a deal because Chris Jones is that important to this city and to this franchise. So, Josh, my final question for you before we get out of here, do you think, I know we kind of talked about it a little bit, do you think that Chris Jones reports before week one? Is this just all a smoke screen? Is this just all for Twitter and Chiefs Kingdom? Do you think that he shows up? And if he doesn't show up to start the season, how many games does he miss? I'm going to say that he shows up before the first game for right now. Um, yeah. It could be subject to change later. I think he'll show up to the first game. I, I do. I yeah. I did want to throw in one more note. Okay. Uh, I, I know that uh, Chiefs fans don't want to give Chris Jones like this massive extension because like he's 30 and look at Aaron Donald and, the contract the Rams gave him. And I'm just going to – let me put it this way. Like I said, the Chiefs aren't winning thing, or they're not winning anything without Chris Jones this year. I also struggle to see them um, winning championships in the next two to three years if they don't have Chris Jones. I just – I feel like he's one of those players that is really hard to replace. You're not replacing him with one singular player, that's for sure. Uh, and I think people are soured on what happened with Aaron Donald and the Rams – I think what makes it look worse, though, the Aaron Donald contract is the fact that the team around Aaron Donald kind of fell apart. And it's not even because they paid Aaron Donald a bunch of money. It's injuries and Super Bowl hangover. Uh, And if the Rams were still competing for championships, I guarantee you we would not be seeing nearly as many people complaining about the Aaron Donald contract. And you've talked before about how uh, Aaron Donald may very well have mailed in last season with the Rams just because that team was so bad around him. And that also affects his performance. And like, it's just not as fun when you're not winning the chiefs during the opposite scenario in which, you know, they're going to be contenders for the next few years. This organization is too well run to not be contending every Mm -hmm. single year with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, But while Patrick Mahomes is here, you want to maximize this window. And I believe this next two to three year window that's what we're looking at right now. And you need Chris Jones to be able to maximize this next two to three year window. I just don't think there's, there's not a way that this defense uh, is better than it is right now in the next two to three years. If Chris Jones is not on it. I agree. I I really do agree. I also think that he's going to be on this defense, be on this team for the start of the 2023 regular season at this point in time. That's where I'm, you know, at, but it's going to be interesting because I could also see a world where he does sit out a couple games. Do I think that it goes all the way till week eight? No. And yeah, you know, once we get up towards week seven or eight and he hasn't shown up, he might just not show up there. There's that possibility as well. But I also think that Chris Jones 
knows that he needs to be on this team in 2023 because it's only going to hurt him in free agency next year if he doesn't play because 19 and a half million dollars is a lot of money and yeah he said that he can't afford the fine but you might not want to pay that fine over and over and over again so I do think that Chris Jones is going to be on this team and I think that we both agree that it's going to be at the start of the season at least that's what we're thinking right now so Josh my final final question for you is where can people find you uh, you can find me right here on YouTube. Uh, it's just my name, Josh Fan. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, what are you doing? Because me and Michael have done this about a thousand times now. Exactly. Um, you can uh, find me on Twitter at ShowMeFB for Show Me Football, and of course, you can uh, view my work on ShowMeFootball.com and ArrowheadAddict.com, where I write. All of his stuff will be in the description of this video. As for me, obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're watching this video right now. What are you doing if you haven't? Uh, Twitter kc underscore sports or kc sports report on twitter kc underscore sports report on instagram the personal at the michael darcy on both instagram and twitter check out my stuff on bleach report that will all be linked in the description as well until next time guys thank you for watching this video and go chiefs